Hmm, I wonder if there's anything good on the radio. Let's have a listen. Probably futile. Junk! Junk! By the fact that this most recent... Talking! Junk! I bet you've... And it's usually... You Talking! Know it's not. Junk! We're gonna be celebrating all the lovely mums out there right now. Whatever. And I know. Much better. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So. As you may or may not know, I'm doing it... Wait, why am I talking like that? So, as you may or may not know, I'm thinking of doing Tesla coils again. Now, you may remember, in the past I've done Tesla coils before. Some of them work pretty good. And others, not so good. It was a bit of a flop. Oh man! Anyway, I have the makings of a new Tesla coil project on the breadboard right here. It's in its very early stages at the moment. So, what I'm doing with this is I'm testing various different cores and seeing how well they work as a gate drive transformer. So, what we got here is a CD4046 chip set up as a voltage controlled oscillator. Then that's going into these two gate driver chips here. And then finally into the transformer. So anyway, I had the crazy idea of using a ferrite rod antenna as the transformer core and surprisingly it actually works pretty well. It's not perfect but it works a lot better than I thought it would. Okay so in the little picture in picture thing you can see the scope. So I'm gonna power this off just a little 9 volt battery and as you can see We've got a pretty good waveform there. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Okay, there's a little bit of sloping, but... You can see there's almost no overshoot. It's pretty clean there, and it's pretty clean there. It actually works a lot better than I thought it would. I'm really surprised at just how good this thing is working. I can adjust the frequency. So we can go down. And we can go up. I don't know how far this circuit is actually going to go. There we are, we're up to about 1 megahertz. And let's go down to about half of that. Let's see how well that works. Actually, see if we can go... See just how far down we can go. Okay, yeah, that's about as far down as we can go. Let's see how far... Um, well, actually, we could go down all the way. But Let's go to about 300 kilohertz. See how well that works. Yeah, that's a little bit low for it now, but yeah. So I had a thought. Since we're essentially sending RF into an antenna, then this must be transmitting. So I thought, see if I can pick this up on a local AM radio. So let's test out that theory. So first I'm going to turn the radio on to a particularly noisy spot on the AM dial. And these are pretty much all noisy spots. Okay, that seems as good a spot as any. So, let's connect up the battery. Try to tune this in and see if it happens. Okay, going the wrong way. Ah. Right about here. Radio goes silent. And according to my scope, this thing is running at 665 kilohertz, which is close enough to where the radio is tuned in. If I disconnect the battery, the radio should become noisy again. And indeed it does. Let's connect the battery again. Nice and silent. So, that gave me an idea. Would it be possible to transmit audio using this circuit. 
And I think the answer to that is going to be a resounding yes. So, if I say connected a microphone up to this circuit, if I connected one end of the microphone here, and the other end of the microphone here through a capacitor so it doesn't throw off the voltage, we should actually be able to produce a modulated signal. It of course would be FM, but it should still be detectable on an AM radio. Right, so let's try this out. Got a little speaker here, which I'm going to use as a microphone. That's connected up to the circuit as I described. I'm going to turn the radio on. Connect up our power. Just do a little fine tuning on the tuning. Okay, now I'm going to put the microphone right up to the speaker. I'm going to pick up our little thing here. That's decided to disconnect itself. Okay, I think I can hear a little something coming out the radio. Okay, so this signal from the microphone is just too weak to produce any kind of usable modulation, and I kind of expected that. So what I've gone and done is, I've connected the output from my computer into this circuit through this potentiometer here. And I've got some music playing that I did on an Atari ST emulator. So, turn the radio on, connect up the battery, we should hear it. And there it is. Let's see if we can get that a little bit better. Yep, yeah, I would say that's working pretty well. And yeah, it is supposed to sound like that because I'm using the SID effect. Okay, so that's basically FM playing on an AM radio. Had to tune it just slightly off the frequency that it's actually tuned in to get it to sound good. But now let's try to do actual AM. So, on this other breadboard, I've built a little circuit using a crystal oscillator and a transformer. So you might be wondering, you know, how this is going to work? Well, let's have a look at the schematic. Got a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator here. That's powered off this 5 volt supply. And we're going to do modulation through a little transformer. And of course that's all going to go out to an antenna. Now I don't actually know what voltage these run at. Googling these things doesn't seem to have given any usable results. So I'm just going to wing it and say that it runs on 5 volts. Alright, I think it's about time to check that this thing works. So. Here's our ground connections, here's the output, and this is where the power's going. Right, so I've set my power supply on 4 volts because I've got to take into account the additional voltage of the audio modulation when I put that in. So just make sure this is working. And yeah, there we go. Got a nice clean square wave there. So, let's see if we can tune in to this circuit on the radio. Now I've got this tuned to the same, well, 
as close to the 1 megahertz that I could get this. I know it's 1 kilohertz off, but I don't really think that's going to matter. Right, so let's just turn the radio up. Plug this in and see if it goes dead. Ah, listen to that. Silence. Yeah. So I've got the output of this connected to a long wire which is just draped over the radio's antenna coil at the moment. And yeah, it seems to have been it seems to have tuned into that pretty good. So now I'm gonna unplug the power. Okay. Yeah. Seems to be able to run off that capacitor for quite a long while. Alright then. Well, let's see if we can do audio modulation. Okay. So, I've got an audio signal connected up to the thing now. Got some 8-bit Atari music playing. And we do have modulation. Although, I have to turn the radio up quite a lot in order to hear anything. Yeah, and that's way more than I would usually have it turned up. Whatever. Alright, so, I've had another idea. I thought, what about instead of using a transformer to modulate the audio, I'm going to use an op-amp instead. Okay, so, I've had another idea. I've thought, what about, instead of using a transformer, what about using an op-amp instead? This way, I'm going to get a little bit of amplification, so our audio is going to come in, hovering around half of the supply voltage, into our oscillator here. And just to be on the safe side, I put a 330 ohm resistor and a 5.1 voltage zener diode, just to cap the voltage in case it goes too high. So. If I supply the circuit with about 8 volts, we should have about half of that coming out of the op-amp and going into the oscillator. So yeah, that's being powered by the op-amp, but I don't think that's really going to matter too much because this thing pulls bugger all current, so should be alright with that. And this variable resistor here is going to adjust how much of the signal actually gets into the circuit. Okay, so firstly I want to make sure that this thing halves the supply voltage. So turn power on. Let it get itself settled. Okay, we're getting about 2 volts out of it. If I remember, I left my power supply on 4 volts. So uh, yeah, I think that's actually doing its job. Okay, let's turn up the supply voltage till we get about 4 volts. Okay, there we go. Four volts, give or take. Right, let's see what voltage is actually going into this thing. 8.1? Yep, I'd say that's dead on. Well, that's about time to connect up the crystal and the antenna and some audio and see if this thing works. Well, so far so good. So, if I turn the radio on, Connect up the power. Radio goes silent. Now connect up my audio source. And there it is. And I don't have to turn the radio up anywhere near as much as I had to before. So anyway. I discovered that this runs best at about 7.5 volts, that gives the best sound quality, so it's about as good as you can expect from a local AM radio station. But you know me, I'm cool dude Clem, I want to take this one step further, so I thought, what about? I take the output from this circuit here, and put it into this little amplifier here, which instead of using a wire antenna, it's going to transmit through the ferrite rod antenna that you saw earlier. I have no idea if it's going to work, but 
Well, let's find out. Okay, well, that didn't work. So anyway, I've refined the circuit, or rather, built a completely different circuit. So ignore this diode that is no longer in the circuit. And this variable capacitor is connected across the coil so I can tune it. And I've got everything set just about right. So I connect a 9 volt battery up. As you can see, across the coil, they've got a nice, rather clean sine wave. So the question is, can we transmit audio? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. And before anybody says anything, yes, I know. Long trailing wires and RF are not a good mix. Okay, this is a bit weird. I haven't got the battery connected up. I've got audio playing into it. I'll turn the radio up. It's actually getting through. So, I don't quite know what's going on, but somehow some of that signal is already getting into that coil. Don't quite know how it's doing that, but let's just connect up the battery and see what happens to the signal. It's a lot clearer with the battery connected. Well, I'm going to bring this video to a close now. This is basically what worked best. Thing is, I don't even need an antenna connected to this. I'm like this. Now I've become the antenna. So, I'm going to show the final schematics, and then the Atari ST, or rather emulated Atari ST, is going to play us out. So, this is the first circuit, which transmits FM on the AM band. That seems to work pretty good, as long as tuned it just right. And by just right, I mean just off the actual frequency that it's actually supposed to be on. And there was this circuit that did work, although it was rather weak in modulation. And then this one, which worked a little better. And then of course this mess of a circuit, which I ended up with. But all in all, I'm going to say this one worked the best. Anyway, I've got other things to get on with now, so um, until next time, goodbye.